Hello guys, I'm Lisa. And I'm Natasha. And we were wondering. Are you free for coffee? Welcome, welcome. Hello guys. Okay, this is kind of a serious topic, but we just wanted to unpack it a little bit. By now you guys have seen or heard Jennifer Aniston. She's been on all the talk shows mm-hmm. and different things um, talking about her struggles with infertility. Yes. So I'm sure y'all remember a few years. Well, when she was married to Brad Pitt, especially. Yes. You know, people speculated oh like, my gosh. oh, that's why he left. Because she didn't want any kids. Because she didn't want kids. She was mm-hmm. so selfish and yada, yes. yada. Yes. So she, now she is um, sharing that. And her ex was very supportive also. Who? Her, not Brad Pitt, but whoever she was with. Oh, during Justin? The, yeah. Oh, him? Was yeah. He? he was, he was very supportive in, in saying like, yeah, she was going through okay. a really tough time. So she was going through all, you know, medical issues, mm-hmm. um, this whole time, you know, keeping it quiet and, and dealing with it. And now she's just come out just, I guess she just wants to speak her truth, you know, yeah. just yeah. Um, say. So we just wanted to talk about it a little bit. And just, I think so many women struggle with reproductive issues. And they suffer in silence. Suffer really, in silence. I really they think do. that's true. And it's society and people, you know, a lot of their parents and in-laws and things put so much pressure on them. Mm-hmm. To, you know, when are you having a baby? When are you having another baby? Yes. <laughs> you know, just. Um, With little to no regard. And then you have people all around you doing it. Yes. And and it feels like this is something I ought to be able to, to do. do. Mm-hmm. Because I guess society has told us. Has painted that, the picture that it's quote right. unquote easy. But I and people have always struggled. Yeah, they oh they have, and the difference is that now a lot of times there's help. Right, not always. Right, it doesn't all like Jennifer. It doesn't always it work, didn't out. work for her. Yeah. But a lot of it, a lot of people, it does work. Right, and so there's things that you can do. But back in the day, it, it, there wasn't. You right. just didn't have children. Right. And you adopted children. I right. mean, that's, those were your choices. Yeah. And now there are um, treatments. And yeah. There's, things. there are more options, but it still doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. Gabrielle Union was very, um, just very forthcoming, very raw, very honest about her struggles with miscarrying. And like listening to her talk about it, it was it was one of those things where her excitement, as soon as the two pink lines occur, you know, were appeared, it faded just that quick as far as her excitement is concerned because she would miscarry. Oh. And how just the, what that the the harm psychological damage, the harm mm-hmm. that caused to her body. So you like, can't you're you're hesitantly happy. Yes. Because yes. you're not. And so you're not even fully yeah, happy. And yeah. that's, that's such really a heartbreaking. Enjoy it because you're yes. not sure. Um, so I guess really what we want to talk about is how we support women that are going through these things. And then just how you can be cognizant of how you speak to women. Yes. No matter who the woman is like, some things not to say, like don't ever ask a woman is she pregnant. Listen, wh- why do people still they in still, the year of our Lord, <laughs> twenty, 20 and twenty two, about to be twenty twenty three. I really, I mean, in like a week, it's about to be yeah. twenty twenty three. Like, why? Why do you ask this? Yeah. Why? I we've talked about this. I don't even remember what episode it was where I had a friend, a dear friend of mine. And she had lost a lot of weight and she's a thick girl. She's, she's really, she's a heavier girl. Um, and, um, she had lost a lot of weight and I made a comment about it and it was a compliment, but as it turns out, the reason for her weight loss was not a good thing. It was like illness or something. It was, yes, okay. it was illness related. It was actually fertility related. Okay. And, um, I just remember thinking, Keep your fucking mouth shut. I felt so bad. Like I literally cried. Yeah. Because I knew I knew that I had triggered her. And so then it hurt me to know 
this is someone I love and I just triggered them. And even though, I mean, we're cool. We're, we're cool. It, it wasn't, you know, she's like, no, girl, I know you, da, 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 da. But still, it was a reminder, like, there are so many things you could ask about. You don't have to ask someone, are right. you pregnant? You don't need to Or bring, they could just be heavy. They could, right. You know, it might not, you know, or some even, people, or you no can have pregnant just You can fat. have a tumor. <laughs> Sorry. You can have PC, uh, PCOS. Yeah. I, I just you just had another. bloated. Yeah, I just Sometimes had another just, uh, friend of mine who listens to our show. She was just diagnosed. So she's currently taking medication for that mm. and going through the struggles of, she's on this new medication and she doesn't have energy because of the medication. I have another friend who also happens to be a listener who has PCOS and was like, so shocked that she was pregnant. And it was really funny to me because she's very level headed. Like she's just very logical, very level headed. And one day I was like, what is wrong with her? You know, I'm thinking, I was like, girl, what are you all right? Like, what is it? And I remember we hung up and I was like, Oh, her hormones are out of back. She is pregnant. Like this is that, this is the crazy stuff that happens at the beginning of pregnancy when your hormones betray you completely. And even in thinking it, she's like, no, there's no way, you know, like there's no way it had happened in all this time. I have PCOS. I have irregular cycles, this, that. I mean, just dealing with that alone can plant so many seeds of doubt. Mm -hmm. It can plant, you know, um, impact your self-worth your mental your health. mental health we, they don't need you asking us are you pregnant none yes. of your damn business i might have just ate yes. a whole damn burrito from chipotle right that's it that's what i did mind your I have business gas. i have gas. have gas that's it yeah yes or, or they right. ask are you pregnant when are you getting pregnant when are you having another baby right so note to self and to others don't ask people about their reproductive health. Yes. And just don't we, or, their, or their reproductive yes. business. Yes. You you know, there are some couples that don't want children. Yes. Do you know that? Yes. There's some people that honestly that are very don't, happily they don't want yes. kids. That's none of your business. business. And you ain't gonna help raise them, let me tell you that. No, or pay for them. And you ain't gonna pay for them. Everybody's not cut out. I just for it. They're I just, just not. told Lisa before we hit record. That in 2021, we paid just under $22,000 in child care. It was $21,835 just in child care. I, I just told Lisa this. And so when people are like, oh my gosh, you guys make parenting look so easy. Are you going to have any more? With what money? <laughs> With what time? Yes. With what any of yes. this? With with what any of it? Yes. Right now, me and my husband's only real conversations occur two days a week when we're able to ride in the car together because we don't have shared off days. And at night, if we can get everyone down, when I take a shower, he sits on the edge of the tub and that's when we talk. That's it. And that's very, very difficult on a relationship. That's difficult on a friendship. That's difficult in general. If you really like this person and this is like your person. Or just on yourself. On yourself. Having time. Having time. You, you just don't. I remember those days when you don't even go to the bathroom alone. Like they're in no. the bathroom with no. you. Mom. Yes. But, I mean, Look at this truck. Did you see this? Yes. Mommy, are you going to ride? I remember my I'm one little son used to hand me the pads. Mommy, what, <laughs> while he's sucking his fingers. Oh, you I know who it was. <laughs> no, get out of my business. Mind your business. <laughs> Listen, but, you, you remember I told you, I think we, we covered this in the uh, postpartum now what episode. My um, my kids, we, we try to be very matter of fact, but not not overly so with them. But we do want them to know what's what. And, you know, they, they have pet names for their parts. and But they also know what the real work, what the real names are. And um, they figured out where babies come from. I don't know how this happened, actually, because they didn't ask me. And they figured it out. And so my son is like, very quickly, comes in the bathroom. He's on the ground. I'm like, what are you doing? It wasn't a fit. You know, so I'm like, what's happening? I'm looking at the baby. And before I could catch my shock, his hand is like in there. I'm like, holy shit, what are you doing? I want to say hi to the baby. I mean, like, there's no privacy. It is that level of unprivate. And then to ask people, hey, do you want to do this? What? Like, maybe if they want to, let them. But, like, don't do that. Yeah. And I think, and, and I, I, especially if you are a woman that has any interaction with younger women, I want to say this. Because I remember being the younger 
girl in my 20s. And my mom was really big on like, are you going to have kids? You're going to have kids? You're going to have kids? And at that time, I did not want kids at all. And I just remember thinking like, I'm doing so many cool things. I'm one of the first women in our family to go to college. I got published while I was in college. Like I had all these things that I thought were worthy of like, oh, that's pretty cool, Natasha. And the whole conversation was always, well, are you going to have kids? And I just thought, like Seriously, I'm, so, I'm worth so much I'm more worth, than that. Right, like yeah. that's not the only thing about me that's really like awesome. Like, yeah. why not? And so, be we have to untrain ourselves of that thought, that dialogue of when are you going to have kids? I've learned to ask, and this I'm still trying to back out of this, guys. I'm trying to get to where I don't. Your uterus is your uterus. Your penis is your penis. I don't get in there, but I do ask sometimes. I'll say, "Well, do I want any more kids?" Now that I do find myself mm-hmm. among, if you're a close friend among among friends, yes, yeah. among friends, because you know like, strangers, hey, near strangers now, yes, will ask. Strangers you. will come up to yeah, you, or people at church, or yes. you know, people that don't know you guys you just that got well. married. When are y'all gonna have any kids? Yeah, like, like that? What? Stop! Please just stop. Stop, stop. stop that. Stop. Because how weird would you feel if someone's like, "When are you gonna have your next pap smear?" Yeah, right. And and then like, how weird would that be if a stranger came you up to you? Don't know what they're going through if they do want kids what they're going through to have the kids yes. and i read you know my stats y'all and right now i don't have it but it's a huge percent it it's, it was something like by the year 20 i don't know oh, it was you like 2056 or something it, it's kind of the near it was 2050 i think you told me about this that how the percentage of people that will only be able to conceive in vitro yes and it was they uh, speculated it was because of plastics, yes. like microplastics in the our environment, and you know what we ingest or whatever. I'm not, I'm not sure, but um, so it's, I guess what I'm saying, it's only going to get worse. Right. People are only going to struggle more. Right. So now, you know, with Roe v. Wade and with all the things. We need to fix our vocabulary. Yes. Concerning yes. women and yes. their reproductivity, you know, yes. just all of it. Um, be kind when yes. you talk to people. Yes. And and yes. just know, just because you don't know what's happening doesn't mean it's not happening. That's it. You, That's you, it. People go through three things every day that you don't know anything about. Yes. And, and tragic and we, we things. we always preach kindness. Right. Now, we may joke, we may poke a little fun sometimes, but we always preach kindness. And this is one of those, this is really serious. Yes. It this is, is so it really serious. Is. And it really affects women's mental health. Yes. A lot of women um, despair. Yes. Really over this. Yes. This is a, you know, I, I didn't, this was not my struggle. Right. So it's it's sometimes hard for me to wrap my brain around exactly you know how they're feeling right. and everything. Um, not that I don't have empathy right. for it because I do, but um, they really despair of this yes. and and become really depressed. And this is a big big deal. So if you have friends or relatives that are going through this, you really need to be a source of support. Yes. Be kind. And, and kindness and getting them to um, you know, self-care. Yeah. You know, be one of those people that sends cards yes. and notes, take them out for a Starbucks. Um, you, you know, just be that just do something. person yes. because they're if if they're going through this Individually, they're struggling, and they're struggling as a couple. Yeah, this uh, people divorce over, over this. this. Yes, they do, and not so much because um, I had a friend that was going through this, and they ended up having twins, and they're grown now and everything. But um, she was saying it got to the point where the husband just didn't want to have sex anymore. I could see because that. it just got to be such a kind of a chore a task yes yeah. daunting like we have yeah. okay yep. the the time is yep. and on such as such my body day, temperatures this, time, we this. Gotta, you know yes. and just this performance and it takes thing. yes and then you get performance anxiety right. which which does happen a yeah. lot and so their their intimacy was was uh struggling was impacted you know Definitely. and not just sexual but just as a 
um, intimacy know, is about connecting. And when right. you cannot connect with someone, right. there is there's danger in that and, and sex for any relationship. It doesn't produce love. It shows love. I agree. So when you kind of take that out of it, yes. the equation, yes. and it's just kind of a, it, it, it really impacts a marriage. Yes. So they are not just struggling with their physical health. Yes. And They're struggling now with their friendship, with their, their partnership, just the all, love languages, so everything. So much. Yeah. So this is really a big, big thing. And it was so brave, I think, of Jennifer Aniston to come forward. I think she's over it now. Like, I'm I'm just not going to do that. I think she's in a better place now. Yeah. And but so, she wants to share. Yeah, yeah. And I thought it was really, really brave of her I agree. to come out and, and say. And you know what? And it, imagine how hurtful. Now, this is, yes. you know, I, I like Brad Pitt. And he was one of my sexiest men alive this week and everything. And, um, and he's since divorced. Angelina um, Jolie. Angelina Jolie. But I can... Only imagine. imagine how hurtful. Here I am. I'm trying I'm to trying. get fucking pregnant, and, and you, you leave me for the chick with all the kids. Right. Like I mean, and, and talk then, about and then think about the tabloids. The Everyone saying how selfish she was, how she didn't want to have she kids, went, and all this other stuff. With, yes, it, just yeah. the whole thing. So I can't. For her to still be in the land of the living and in her right mind is is a beautiful, it really beautiful blessing is. for real. And so, yeah, like I liked her before, but I think I love her now. I like, do, and I really liked she's her a before. Shiro. Yes, I mean I she's agree. a badass boss. I agree. You hear me? Yes, Cause that could have broke you down. down. Yeah, really. A sp- I mean that that just would have been the straw that broke the camel's back. I mean back. anybody else, just go with somebody. Yes. Not, not like you said, not the chick that that gets pregnant. You just look if, at her. If you she's look at her, and she's go. adopted twenty nine yes. kids, and yes. you know she's Mother Earth, and yes. you know it just, all of those I things. I can't even imagine. Yeah. So, and you know, I want to. I guess this is kind of a shout out to my dad, to my daddy, um, for anyone that's like you're male and you're thinking. Like, okay, but how does this work for me? So my aunt, um, who's, this is not a secret or anything, um, but I didn't understand this as a child. So my dad is one of seven. My mom's one of 19. So y'all, we do very big families. And before anyone asks, no, my husband and I are done. (laughs) We're not keeping up with these numbers. But, um, you know, really, really big, just, just huge families. I mean, one of 19 is massive. One of seven nowadays would be considered very, very big. And everyone has kids except for one of my aunts. And she has always treated us like her own um, in a world where sometimes, you know, white guy shows up with black kids. You're not treated so well. We never experienced that. Like she tried to figure out how to do our hair when we were kids. We would spend the night. We were, I mean, just everything, just kind of this, this dream thing. And I remember asking my dad, I was like, daddy, are we stopping Aunt Nancy from having kids? Because I'm thinking like, well, she does all this stuff with us. She don't have time for any other kids. Mm -hmm. Like maybe that's what it is, you know? And this is my child brain. And so I'd ask my dad and my dad's real stoic about stuff. Tasha, you know, da, 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 go on, whatever. And so one day I asked him and I was really persistent. And I suppose he thought she's not going to let this go. And I don't know if he had talked to my mom or what. My dad was watering the yard. Again, y'all grew up very, very country in the hood, but real country. So my dad's outside barefoot watering the yard. And I go up, I drink out of the water hose and I ask him again. And he said, I don't care how they make it look on TV. For some people, it's not easy to have a baby. And I said, oh, yeah, because my dad was very big. I said, they could be big like you, and it would be hard to get them out. You know, I'm thinking, I didn't know about C-sections. My dad was almost 11 pounds, and my grandma was very small. And I thought, well, that would be the thing. And he told me, he said, no, for your Aunt Nancy, it's like you and me having legs. She's got legs. And everybody's telling her, well, you got legs. Get on up and walk. But every time she tries to get up and walk, her legs don't work like mama's legs work or like your legs may work. And he was like, so it's not that she doesn't want to walk. It's that she's doing everything right, but her legs just won't walk. Oh, that was a sweet way to explain it. And I remember thinking, well, can't we fix it? Can't we? My sister had club feet and I thought we could get braces. You know, th- again, this is the mind of a child. Mm-hmm. How do you fix it? How do you fix it? How do you fix it? 
And I had to reconcile, and it probably took me to high school to reconcile some problems, no matter what you throw at it, it simply won't be fixed. Mm -hmm. Even if the fix worked for someone else, the fix may not work for the next person. Mm -hmm. Even if it worked perfectly for whoever else, it didn't work for Jennifer Aniston. And how dare any of us say, well, if you would just do this, it would work. Well, no, you don't think she tried Mm -hmm. that? Which makes it, in my opinion, almost 10 times worse that you're ragging on her because she she did. You don't think she tried everything mm-hmm. out there? Mm-hmm. And and I mean, I was in high school when it hit me. My aunt chose to love us like that. She chose to love all of her nieces and nephews like that. She could have been bitter. She could have been mad. She, she chose could've... to love the kids in her life. In her life, yes. Yeah, what she did have. But of course, yeah. because she came from a big family, what does everyone know? Well, I just, I can't believe you didn't have kids. And then, you know, I'm thinking... Now, little old hood me, I'm thinking, say one more word to my aunt. I'm going to box you to the ground. Because in my head, I'm thinking, you don't know what she went through. And I still don't know all of what she went through. But I do know from her, she just wasn't able to carry kids. It just wasn't a thing. And it really really did craft my... I didn't understand the why, but it helped me to understand everyone can't do it. Right. So this is a blessing. Like, this isn't something for me to take lightly. Everyone can't do it. And be supportive in how people choose to make their families. Yes. Whether it's adoption, whether it's surrogacy. Yes. Whether it's... If it's volunteering um, at, you know, the Boys and Girls right. Club. Really. What, what, whatever. Be supportive. Yeah. Be supportive in how... Or, or they just choose to be childless. Yes. However, you know, families come in all shapes and sizes. Yes. You don't have to have children to have a family. That's correct. So... um Be supportive, um, be kind, and just mind your business. Sweep around your own front porch. It was just this, the topic was just kind of heartbreaking to us. You know, we just felt like, it really shocked me. I just didn't. When it came out, it really shocked me. Yeah. I felt so sad for her. I did too. I really felt sad for her. I think I felt most sad for, I remember reading. The suffering in silence, yeah. I think. I mean, yeah. I'm sure she had friends around her, but, you know. But so to be so publicly attacked right. and to be and, called and selfish and stuff. You, and yes. you, have, you just take And then it. people literally blamed her for their separation, yeah. for their divorce. Yeah. And it's just like, no. It takes two to it tango. It takes two to tango. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, I definitely And that she can that. be, this really uh, shows her character that... She can be kind to him. I've never heard her say bad things about Me him. Because, um, baby. <laughs> At least I wouldn't go say it, but in my like, head, I was like, this mother- I would mm. run his ass in the ground okay. with my mouth. I'd mean, really, walk him in the streets. Right? I sure would. I just would. Just Well, let me tell you what really happened. Right? So, you know. And she God never, she never did. God bless her. So I don't know if she's just like done and not going to do it or... You know, maybe she she just felt like now was the time she wants to adopt or or serve or however. I don't. That was not divulged. So we wish her the best, absolutely, with whatever she wants to do. And we appreciate her speaking about it. We do coming out. We really do it because it's just um, it it opens a conversation. So we just want to share that and just um, encourage everyone to be kind and. Mind your business, please. And um, wrap your arms around people that are struggling. If you know people in your life that are struggling with this, um, just be supportive. I agree. Just be supportive. And during the holidays, this is a hard time for them. Yes. So just recognize that and do what you can to make it easier and not worse. And inclusive. And I agree. Yeah. So up next, our picks for the sexiest man alive this week. But first, a message from our sponsor, BetterHelp. During hard times, it can get really difficult if you don't have anyone to talk to. Being alone with your thoughts can be an isolating feeling that can allow negativity to consume you. This is why we are sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000-plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. 
You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with the therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages, and everything you share is completely confidential. You can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. So many people use BetterHelp that they are currently recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash free for coffee. That's betterhelp.com slash free for coffee. Okay, so this week, I'm I'm on a roll. Are you? I am. I know who I have. Do you? They are not tatted up, and they are not an She's athlete. She just got out of her comfort zone, y'all. Guys, I ran out of folks that was tatted up and musicians. Okay. So this week, mine is, he is a funny man. Okay. <laughs> so we, I guess I'm on a comedian role. Kevin James. Oh, the king, king. What was his show? King yeah, of the something. Yeah. Okay, King of Queens. Yeah, I think was the I think show. That was it. Funny yeah. enough, never watched it. Oh, I know how weird. I know everyone's seen it. Never well, watched he's it. A, he's but been he, a lot of funny you know, he's things. part of the Adam Sandler crew, and it ain't nobody in that crew. I don't like. I like Chris oh, Rock. Right. I like Rob Schneider. He I was like in that uh, Kevin like James. Aaron something. Yeah, he's been in all of them. Okay, he's been yeah. in all of them. I he, love him. He's, he is like a typical dad to me. That's, that you know, might be what like it is. Like that dad look. Yeah. Just a nice guy. I think I've entered that section of nice. life where I'd rather you be funny than sexy. Right. And just fucking nice. Yes. But he does have a pretty smile. And I have a thing he for smiles. I think he's cute. He is. In the, yeah. in the dad That's way. my guy. In the That's dad my way. guy. Oh, he's cute. Look um, at me. I'm doing good, guys. I'm picking Liam Neeson. And I, Ooh, it might be because yes. I watched Love Actually again. You know, he's in that. <laughs> That may be right. And that kind of, you know, spurred, like, oh, he's cute. I forgot about him. And he's way age appropriate. He's he older is. than me. Can you believe it? He's older than me. He's You're a, not that old. He's a, a widower. He y'all. is. He, he is. is still, he is not remarried from when his wife. Oh, no. I didn't know he away. never remarried. No. I'm, now, you know, I don't know Liam. So I'm right. I'm pretty sure he probably kicking but, it with somebody. But but, but, he, but he, he is has fine. not remarried. He is. He, he is. is. He's he, um, I love all those movies he's in. Taken, Taken. Oh my like gosh. he's such a badass. Take yes. a bullet for you. That's, listen, I love that. Listen. Don't hey, you? I mean, take a guy him. that would take a bullet for you. Yes. And like, then, and, 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 and then in the and movie, then, he then loves we'll his, find you. His daughter. We'll like I'm finding my yes. yes, yes. Oh my gosh, he was so calm, and it's like you knew what was going to happen. But his calmness, I'm like, shit, this is eerie to me, and I know what's going right, to happen. Right. I, I know the whole premise right. of this of this whole the plot. Something I know it. Sexy about a guy that can handle weapons. Well, you know what? Or it is. It is that, sexy. That, but also, well, no, because you didn't think that um, my uh, lumberjack was <laughs> it was sexy. And what weapon does he have with? A saw? A axe is a weapon. It's the same. It ain't the same. But, you know, his his persistence in saving her, I mean, come on. It really Every, was. Everybody fell yes. in love with that. Everyone yes. did. Yes, He's yes, a cutie yes. and age appropriate. Look, are you back on your age appropriate? Maybe. And wagon. he was in another movie, and I can't remember the name. Uh, where the wife got cancer and he was yes and he was so, the same but the same uh, persistence yes like that that steadfast caring, yes. love yes and he seems like that in real life I, I mean and he then really to think that he's does. never remarried it kind of makes you wonder if that's just who he is that might just get be. married Liam he he may be content he you know what and if he feels though if if he feels as though he married his soulmate what's the point of remarrying. I know that, but that makes me kind of sad for him. Yeah, kind of. It does, but kind of. He may have really still sexy, sad. Still (laughs) sexy, sexy, sad. Okay, well that turned that went on an upstroke. (laughs) Thank you all for pulling up a chair and joining us for coffee. Please subscribe to Are You Free for Coffee podcast wherever you are listening. We hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Learn to sweep around your own front porch and enjoy the little things. Until next time.